On December 31st, 1975, Home Box Office presented Robert Klein in the very first on-location comedy special. Before Klein's heralded performance that night, HBO was a little-known company with a mere handful of subscribers. Its only previous special had been Polka Night in Pennsylvania, which, in addition to drawing almost no audience, was plagued by accordion maintenance problems. Since his historic concert, Klein has done several more, and HBO has prospered mightily, acquiring over 20 million subscribers, making it the largest paid television network in the world. Before Robert Klein, Polka Night. After Robert Klein, Buff Omega Corporation. Coincidence? You be the judge. Remember, it all started here. According to Jane Goodall and others, there are chimpanzees in the wild, in Africa, that do not smoke cigars and wear tuxedos. <laughs> Let's say someone were about to murder you. It's ridiculous, I know, statistically. But if someone were about something horrible, like the best thing you could possibly do would be to go, ooh -wee. Will the Jew who ordered the kosher meal please make himself known? Are you the Jew, sir? Sorry, you had a beard, your nose was, I thought maybe you were a Jew. Are you the Jew, sir? Thank goodness, sir. May I see your genitals, sir? The frog's legs? Tastes like chicken. <laughs> alligator meat? They have the freshest alligator meat. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Rattlesnake steak? Tastes uh, like chicken. <laughs> Look, what is that? Chicken. <laughs> Occasionally, if there's a cigarette butt in the urinal, I will aim for it and pretend it's a Nazi installation. How much time we got? 15 minutes, Mr. Klein. Thank you, Jimmy. Break a leg. I don't wear makeup all the time, just for television. Yes, he does. You want to do this show? It's a bitch. Oh, yeah, 20th anniversary. When I started, HBO was a tiny little HBO. No one knew what it was. Hippo, people say. Hey, what the hippo? You know? You've influenced a lot of comedians. Oh, practically a legend. I hate to be a modest. But, uh, you know, I've certainly influenced a lot. I, I wrote a lot of things that have since been, you know, hey, you guys have been great. Drive safely. At the end of the set, that was mine. <laughs> Uh, 1969, Hungry Eye, you know, uh, you, you guys from out of town? That was mine. It was to warm, you know, to get closer to people. So, uh, I've been pretty innovative along. This mic on? That was mine. Excuse me, they're ready for you now, Mr. Clark. Ready for you now. They used to say, hey, you're on, until I wrote that 19... Uh, 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 Mr. Kelly, Chicago. Uh, <clears throat> and especially the peace sign that was my innovation. Where are you from, Kansas City? I did that one in Kansas City. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, in his sixth home box office special, Mr. Robert Klein. Thank you very much. Twentieth anniversary of the first HBO show. I grew up in this organization. Look at that. Is it nice to be compared to when you were not a vegetable? Not a mass of cellulite and, and fatigue? Look, already I was parting the hair on the side a little like Sam Nunn, you know? I was cheating already with the swept forward. Now there's little to work with. There's a little fuzz here. I'm developing a nice friar tuck, horseshoe baldness. I don't know whether to go to a monastery or 
have a transplant, 15,000. They'll take hair from here, they told me, put it here. Like donor hair, like farming, literally. <laughs> literally taking from here, planting here, like farming. Uh, and it's your own hair for the rest of your life. Now, the government will pay me 20,000 not to grow here. <laughs> And I can even do better if I alternate hair, carrots, hair, carrots. <laughs> An oxidil, $85 a month for fuzz. I never heard the word hair associated with it. Oh, dad definitely has some fuzz. There's fuzz. There's definitely fuzz. There was no fuzz before. Smash a peach onto your head. You're better off. It's a high blood pressure drug that they happened to notice grew hair on an unfortunate lady in Minneapolis <laughs> who... <laughs> Experience the werewolf syndrome. <laughs> Mrs. Nelson, very blonde hair growing out of her eyeballs. I mean, everywhere. So people began rubbing this crap and the blood pressure went to nothing. They had to keep on, you know, squeezing their thigh every minute and a half to live. Uh, and also it, it stops. I mean, I heard the hair falls out, the fuzz falls out. Immediately you stop using it, which is pretty cruel uh, planned obsolescence. Better than anything General Motors ever did. You stop paying the money, the hair goes up yours, fella, and zoom, goes back to the hair heaven. So I Sperling Hair Club for Men. I'm listening to a man, I'm watching, there's something wrong. And he says, I'm not only the president of Hair Club for Men, his ace in the hole takes out an eight by 10 of himself bald in which he looks a hundred times better. <laughs> like a mensch, like a, a John Glenn, like you, like you. Right? And he goes, I'm also a client. This is a surprise, a man is talking to you for a minute and a half with an arugula on his head. You know, combs his hair with vinaigrette in the morning, this guy. <laughs> I'm 53, I'm in decent shape. I have a, a trainer, comes three times a week, German. He chases me with a German shepherd. <laughs> achtung, achtung, and I run and lose that weight of dripping off me. I was 220, I'm down to 202. But I'm, you know, but I'm 53, and I, you know, I, I got, somebody sent me in the mail an ARP card. <laughs> Whose business is it? Who told them? Who needs an ARP card? I don't want to see this stuff yet. I'll get there, I'll get there. American Association of Retired People. Whose business is it? Probably a, like a schmuck. I filled out a form at a Tom McCann 25 years ago. <laughs> And the, the computer knows, send him this stuff now. He's 53. Don't send him car seats. Don't send him young people stuff. Send him varicose vein information. Send him burial plots. Send him Depends wholesaling information. Send him memory courses. That's what you send him. I took that magazine, the ARP, a big thick magazine, I put it next to the toilet with the Hamakish Schlemmer catalog <laughs> and the Land's End. I mean, you know, don't they know when they print those, they all wind up next to the crapper? I don't think I've ever read one of those catalogs when I wasn't in the process of moving my bowels, <laughs> as far as I can remember. Maybe on uh, a plane I had one with me and I uh, reverse Pavlov took over, I read the thing and I have to move my bowels. <laughs> This kayak will get you through the grade 10 rapids and more. You know, I just went and I don't understand it. <laughs> the poplin not good in khaki and SSL. You know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's gas. <laughs> Open your garage door from Yonkers and kill all rodents with this whistle used by English gardeners. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, uh... Our discounts. How about the early bird special? I can get the best lobster in Fort Lauderdale with my ARP card for six dollars. <laughs> if I'm willing to eat it at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> and be out before, ten, before the full pop people come. They don't like to depress them. Mr. Klein, it's at 10.30. You are one of the early birds. Please take your bib, sit on your car. Hey, burial thing. You know, my parents have since gone. They had good full lives, but that's an expense. And a, really, they hated 
the thought of money being. You ever see that pathetic commercial? Yes, Martha, I always took care of you. That's why I got that extra insurance when dad died, you know. $500, enough to cover the embalming fluid if they're Gentiles. You know, um, you know it was like $8,000 or something for a funeral. And, and, and you know, they have these little <laughs> ways of getting around the system. The Neptune Society advertised for $1,500. I think they cremate you for an extra three if you buy the fire package. It's like buying a, a car, you know. And then the urn package, which comes, they take you out to Rockaway and drop you off in the wind with a couple of sea cadets. You know, going to the sea. If you're Jewish, the sea cadets wear yarmulkes to accommodate any religion. Kosher snacks. The budget, $250. They drop you off the Triborough Bridge. The cops pick you up in a launch. <laughs> take you to Potter's Field. You're gonna be... I asked my father when he was very ill, who he's very funny too, and I said, well, what would be your preference in a coffin? And somebody said, my preference? My preference would be not to need one. That's my preference. <laughs> and my mother said, don't spend a lot of money on that crap. You know, she infuriated her. Fury that you would spend. What, are you going to use it again? What is it, a toy chest? You know. <laughs> You know, the Orthodox Jews, they have a pine box, very simple and unsubstantial, kind of creaks and groans and bends, you know, with slats like a sun kiss crate, you know, and a, not good, you know, an arm could swing out, smack a pallbearer right in the face. You don't want that sort of thing happening. It's an apt burial for a grapefruit, but not for my mother. So we decided to go a little better, you know what I mean? And they pulled the bait and switch. No, we don't have that one for 1500 I'm sorry, we don't have that one for 2000 No, I'm sorry, the $3,500, we are out. How do you like that? The forty-two-five is gone. We don't have the fifty-six fifty. We have the 6600 with the 100-year guarantee. I can get you the other one next month. I said, fine, we'll put mother in a dairy queen while we're waiting for you. But you know the essential thing about Jews, you imbecile, we bury immediately. One of my favorite things about my race. We bury a Jew dies Zumo into the groundo. We don't fool around though. A Jew dies Zoom like one motion. Die Zoom right in the ground there. A Jew dies at noon. Call the relatives in Phoenix. The funeral's at two. That's right. Now there's an advantage, my Gentile friends, I've been to far too many wakes. I feel so sorry, five days, eight shows a day like vaudeville. <laughs> you know, the family needs a break. With the wax fruit look, with the kids kissing it, look, she looks so wonderful, right. Get the chemical out of her veins, get her into the ground immediately, let's start remembering her. That's the thing. We want to start remembering. I don't know what the rationale, but there are many reasons why Jews bury me. You know, uh, let, let's start remembering you. Uh, let's go on with our lives. You're not as interesting as he used to be. I mean, <laughs> Ayatollah Khomeini died. They carried him off six weeks. <laughs> and beating the shit out of themselves with birch rods. Fascinating. And they weren't in a sauna either, beating the shit out of themselves. Near death, I thought. Few more of them die, we're set. <laughs> I have, uh... I have no apology to make for that, by the way. No cultural apologies. It's not the great Persian people. It's people who use children as mind detectors. At least we use dogs in World War II. Good going, butch. You know, it's better than someone's kid. <laughs> right? I don't like, you know... Of course, some people are fanatics about dogs. Oh, you know. The Gulf War, it was hilarious. Until Saddam Hussein flooded the Gulf, Americans weren't interested. When they saw a seagull tripsing up shore with, you know, 10W40 dripping off, you know, like this. They went, holy shit, all right, you son of a bitch, camel jockey, son of a People are one thing, but no seagull, no, you know. Kept CNN afloat. <laughs> anyway, uh, a Jew dies, I mean, Jews bury very quickly, and that's all I can. I mean, uh, Jews bury so quickly that sometimes older Jewish people around their relatives are afraid to take a nap. 
lest they be mistaken for dead. It happens all the time. Much more than you hear about it. It'll be on Mike Wallace or Gloria Lake or one of those shows soon. Premature Jewish burial. It's an absolute ethnic tragedy. <laughs> Never mind circumcision. I'll live with that. But premature burial, it's awful. You're, Pop, we got to go home. Yeah, kids have school tomorrow. Come on, Pop. 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 He's dead. I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I got rhythm, I got music, I got my Hanuvian. Tut 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 say goodbye. Tut 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 say don't cry. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. It's like a nightmare with this family. Fourth time this month you're trying to bury the old man. The hell's the matter with you? Give me a fucking coffin with a phone in it, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> I was reading an article in Scientific American apropos of this and how, how uh, these forensic anthropologists could tell the cause of death of a mummy 4,000 years later. He got a lot of blows to the head in those days. You know, I don't like this pharaoh. I want a new pharaoh. Boom, that's it. Um, I know there's Johnny Cochran in front of you for six weeks being a genius, you know, talking you out of all reason, you know. Uh, it's just a settled thing. A lot of tuberculosis, kidney disease, and those years. Anyway, they couldn't figure out the cause of death. They finally, it's six months, the greatest microscopes. He died of suffocation, wrapped in mummy rags before he was dead. <laughs> Evidently a Jew, and they jumped the gun on the son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, my folks retired to a place called Section 21 in Tamarack, Florida. I mean, I. <clears throat> they paid good money. I mean, can you imagine going to a, considering the recent history of the Jewish people, to, voluntarily to a place called Section 21 <laughs> and tell your relatives, you know? It was, I don't know, man. It was, it was bizarre from the start. Very unuser friendly to grandchildren and children, you know? I'm sorry you can't go in the pool till you're 54, you know? <laughs> Well, you know, the kids pee in it, we can't have kids. This is this from a community whose entire population is incontinent, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, girlie, out of the pool, I heard. No bathing cap. This was <laughs> in this century, you know what I mean? So you know, people are cranky there, they're not at their prime. Look, you know, I mean, you know, they get into fights. The guy was a banker, now it's in the, he helps people into parking spots that don't need it. And he's in charge of the shuffleboard maintenance committee at the condo. Yeah. So my kid wanted to play shuffleboard, he was seven. I'm sorry, you gotta be 12. You know. And someone else comes along spoiling for a fight. Come on, let him, for Christ's sakes. You know, uh, you voted for roses at the clubhouse, you know, you know I'm allergic. And you know, they start coming. <laughs> Fantastic. I was in the hospital uh, a year and a half ago, first time in my life. A burst, it's like an appendix, but it was a Meckel's diverticulum. I was in uh, intensive care for five days, tubes in me. I never was in the hospital in my life. And, and uh, uh, you know, they made me walk in about three and a half days and I'm going around in a circle in the intensive care and I notice I'm being joined by the guy from room one with the <laughs> prosthetic leg. And then uh, Alzheimer's and two came out and two A. <clears throat> then the bone marrow transplant and three came out and all of us are going around like, uh, like the prisoners in Midnight Express, remember, in the Turkish prison. I felt like I wanted to go opposite, but I couldn't turn. My tubes were in the way. And then suddenly I thought of my old Fred Capicella routine, my racetrack. You're off, Timeline on the outside, rickshaw second. Will I mean it, baby, third, clap, trap, whoa, here comes Linton, you know. And I thought, hey, there goes the Meckles diverticulum, taking a very good lead. Alzheimer's coming up quick in the outside. Stroke from 5A has come in on the inside, making a run. It's Meckles, it's Stroke, it's Alzheimer's with Meckles. One of the great performances I've ever seen in a world stage in my life was O.J. Simpson trying on the gloves. <laughs> it was a Marcel Marceau. <laughs> then he started a Paul Lind eye contacting. You know.
you know, if he actually put his strength in, the glove would have been through the ceiling into Ito's nose. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. Yes, I heard there are great thing, every results of this. The lab will be cleaner from now on. And, you know, you, you, you never saw a cop who's a fascist before who never had any time. You can't have it both ways. This is a gang that couldn't shoot straight, okay? These people didn't know each other. What do they get? Miss Mazzola, all right, put down that blood there. All right, all right, Mr. Funk, put it. All right, now, okay, now make sure he limps and make sure the arthritis there with the drop every second time. All right, take the Bruno Maglis, that's it. Put him in there, bend on him. All right, Furman, will you stop zig hiling, you putts? Get over here. You may be the death of this case. All right, now, the chauffeur's coming. He's got to see a black man running in the front door. Officer Leroy, get over here. I got a job for you. All right. No! All right, let's go. You can't have it both ways. This is the gang that couldn't shoot straight. They fucked up everything. You can sucker some punk in the street and plant stuff, which that bastard evidently did, but you can't pull it with O.J. Simpson, who has the best 14 lawyers in the planet. For all intents and purposes, he's an elitist. He's wealthy and powerful and beloved. No one's, you know, you know God. I can tell you one thing about it. I, I always considered him a bad actor. Not anymore. <laughs> genius, genius, OJ. Uh, Cochran is a genius. If I slash my wife's throat, it's the first one I turn to. There's no question about it. I think the law was not well represented here, but he's brilliant because he's a great actor too. He's also a good lawyer, but you know, it got to ridiculous uh, when that wet witness Heidstra had said in one of the hearings that he had heard uh, what he thought a black man's voice. And he goes, that's ridiculous, Your Honor, Cochran. You know, ridiculous, Your Honor, that is racist. In 1995, we have to stand here and listen to this stuff, Your Honor. This is ridiculous, it's racist, that you could tell whether a man is black or white by the way he tells. That is ridiculous, Your Honor. And I don't want to sit here, and I don't want to listen to it. That's ridiculous. It's racist. Don't you agree, Mr. Newfell? I totally agree, Mr. Cochran. I think it would be impossible and racist to tell whether a man is black or white or whatever ethnic room he is. I thought to myself, he sounds black to me. Probably raised by Jews. <laughs> I mean, they needed a translator for him as well as Rosa Lopez, you know. Miss Mazzola, is it fair to say that the allele was contaminated? Miss Mazzola, is it fair to say that the allele was contaminated? And in addition, Miss Mazzola, is it fair to say? In addition, Miss Mazzola, is it fair to say? That the blood was contaminated, went into your tongue, your nose, you put it in your, it leaped, the allele leaped into the other allele, making a double allele. But it put it in your tongue, and put it in your nose, and it was a meal in the allele. And it came out the other side in your tongue. Let's see if you had a public defender, like 99% of the people who slash someone's throat, who has 100 cases, who doesn't know your name. My client, Mr. O.G. Simpson, is innocent. Mr. Uh, O.J. Simpson is innocent, you know, where your experts are five kids with a Gilbert chemistry set. <laughs> the blood doesn't leap off. The other ones were sour. But I tell you, CNN is the massariest people in the world that this happened. They was keeping them afloat. They had an earphone into Judge Ito. Take a break now, all right? Yeah, <laughs> call a sidebar. Yeah. We have an Ann Murray commercial, two and a half minutes, all right? Oh, snowbird going along. Makeup, come on, Ito's wedding, come on. Right. Marsha, pull the skirt down, the polkies are showing, let's go. <laughs> well, Dershowitz, he, he thought this was horrible. He got on Larry King that night because John Bobbitt had a urinary infection, so he got a slot. <laughs> This is America. We make heroes of John Bobbitt. I was in Orso's restaurant in New York, and these two agents are with a guy, and he says, Hey, Robert Klein, like you to meet John Bobbitt. I go, Jeez. I, you know, what do you think I thought? The guy whose wife cut his penis off. <laughs> I mean, what am I, my, hi, the guy, this all registered, hi, the guy who cut his penis off, yeah. What else would he be doing eating the best pasta in town? Normally, before his wife cut his penis off, he was eating Chef Boyardee ravioli and meat sauce out of a can. So you figure this one out. 
wife got his penis off, his life began. <laughs> He's sitting with a couple of agents there. My penis works, I can't get mine on the phone. <laughs> Single again, you know, um, six years actually. Uh, divorced, no bitterness. There's, uh, you know, the <laughs> wounds have healed. The, I watched a lot of Oprah shows on the subject and the people. And I figured I don't have any problems when I see these people. Yeah, you want to duke it out now? You know, I know, we never did that. So uh, I had a lawyer charge 300 an hour. Used to charge for hello in the morning. I mean, you could hear a chess timer go off. This was a real heart, you know. Morning, Robert. Now, um, <clears throat> and these stutters used to cost me 1500 to say hello. <laughs> anyway, that's all right. Different, I, I'm a romantic, I might get married again. I think, uh, I think of the perfect woman, I don't know. A good sense of humor, beautiful, uh, mature, uh, dark hair, maybe a pale complexion. I imagine a very pale complexion from having her blood tested three times a week. <laughs> I'd like my new love to be married and cheating for the first time on her husband, the hematologist. <laughs> um. I'm going to my towel now. Hey, look how he got off. John Gotti had took five cases to get him. You know, they had tape recordings of me. I wasted this guy because he didn't answer my call, all right? And the lawyer, Cutler, went in front of the jury. Yes, he wasted, Mr. Gotti, wasted a friendship. In the sense that friendship can be wasted, that there was a wasted friendship. These people knew each other all their lives. It was wasted, especially in the light of the man's unfortunate death by a grenade in his soup. <laughs> it was wasted, completely wasted, and we... I whacked him, I whacked his brother, I whacked all, whacked. Yes, see, the traditional Sicilian pillow fight. They were whacking. <laughs> each other in the traditional feast of St. Cecilia, where the whacking is done. Uh, I, we are prepared to have the culture minister of Naples brought here, Mr. Bonzo Villolo, who <laughs> will prove that the whacking has nothing to do with death or murder or killing ever mentioned by my client. Really, this is an outrage. And the, Yes, I rubbed him out. I rubbed that old family out. They would have rubbed, yes, they were rubbing each other in the sauna at the Fish and Gun Club. There is a traditional uh, gagliaro, which is, means the rubbing out of the evil spirits on New Year's Eve by friends and compatriots. There's a rubbing, there's a general rubbing of the, then they had one said, I killed this guy with my gun. Serial number four, three, three, two, one. Rest is rubbed out. I, Mr. Gotti, on 8th Avenue, 73rd Street. All right? It's out of context, Your Honor. This is ridiculous. It's a witch hunt. It's a complete witch hunt. It's out of context. If you go on, you'll see. On second thought, if you go back, you'll see that. I still can't understand my computer, so my, the poor man's internet is QVC at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> what is Diamondique? I never, <laughs> I never, uh, I never owned a diamond. I know, I know Diamondique. There's something wrong there that may be worth twenty thousand dollars, depending on the size of the diamond. Surely not the eek, right? You know? And this beautiful Diamondique ring, sparkling and gorgeous, with a finger with a ruler next to it. Once in a while, they smack it, see if people are still up. You know? <laughs> and this beautiful Diamondique ring. Surrounded by four gorgeous one carat sapphire edos. Yes, they're beautiful sapphire edos, and they're absolutely complement the diamond eek to a T. They're beautiful sapphire edos surrounding it with a gorgeous three carat rose shaped ruby rosa. A beautiful ruby rosa in there, perfectly complementing the sapphire edos and the diamond eek with a gorgeous, absolute, have you ever seen anything exquisite as a three carat sparkling green emerald Aldo? Yes, a gorgeous <laughs> emeraldo, not an ordinary emeraldo. This is registered with the American Emeraldo Society. 
That's for the hawk shop later. What do you mean three bucks? It's registered the American Emeraldo Society. <laughs> yes, how about the American Schmucko Believe Anything Society, sir? To... <laughs> Which I think you're a charter member. Two dollars for annoying me. I mean, you know. And it's all in 10 karat gold arenio. Beautiful gold arenio. Harder than gold, I warrant you. It's a harder substance than gold. Gold arenio is gorgeous. You've got the sapphire arenos, the emeraldos, compliment the diamond ink and the sapphire arenos and the rubarosa so beautifully in the gold arenio. Let me ask you, when they ask you to pay for this, can you pay in money oleo? <laughs> Well, you have to come across with the real stuff. Either, hey, here's a 20 Edo and a, well, a five uh, Renio. Let's see if I can put uh, 20 single Unos next to it. With VC I saw them demonstrating a VCR, and it's clear these people don't have a lot of time with the product they handle. So, you know, it's fully featured. It's a black, a gorgeous, high fashion VCR. It's a black VCR. It goes with anything. It's a v black VCR, you know, as opposed to the puce and fuchsia VCRs that most of us have. It's a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, black VCR, fully featured. It's got, uh, let's see, it's got uh, stop, you play, stop. It's got QE, it's got fuff, -fuff. It's got rrr, it's got rrr. And I believe you can play them in any sequence. Pause, fuff, -fuff rrr, QE. Play, stop, play, stop, QE, fuff, -fuff. Um, here is the chord. It's a two-pronger. It goes right. Most of your chords are two-prongers. It's not one of those three-prongers. This is a two-pronger. And it's gorgeous. And the speeds, it's going to go... Anyway, it's got uh, slilip, um, epip, and galipip. And it's, it's, it's a spipip. And it goes all the speeds. That's, you know, that lingo of these. I'm just a child of the 50s myself. I don't really know this. But... All right, I want to introduce my colleague, I'm very proud of our 12-year association producer of this show, Bob Stein with the Robert Klein Orchestra. Give them a hand here. Come on, Bob. Chuck. Hey. Robert. I just want to say a word for President Clinton. I think he's going to win again because that's the way things go. You know what I mean? You don't have to applaud. People are not enthusiastic about much that's going on out there. That's understandable. You see these guys in the Senate, like Strom Thurmond, wasting people's time. I can't hear I can't hear him, Jack Jolly. Well, I can't hear I can't hear With the hair transplants and the married a woman about 97 years younger than he was, married an embryo, <laughs> which you were permitted to do in South Carolina at the time. But I think the... The poor transplants possibly infected inward, explaining his public behavior for the past 50 years. When Jane Alexander, my uh, colleague on Broadway and Sisters Rosenzweig, when she was going to Washington to take the job of the National Endowment of the Arts Chairman, I gave her a gavel for the meetings. I said to, you know, call the endowment to order and also as a weapon of last resort in case she gets caught in a room alone with Senator Packwood. So she has a little... How's this, Lizzo? Come on, please. And, and publicly, he did a lot of things on behalf of women, but my God. And threatening them with their jobs, that's the low part. Imagine being approached by him with those nice Seagram's belches wafting out of his... <laughs> Hello, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, he kept a diary, you know, all time. One of the political uh, great moves of all time. 9.30, see the Secretary General's committee members. 9.40, put my tongue down his secretary's neck and say, why don't you wear heels? <laughs> Packwood kept a diary. I mean, you know, a guy like, first of all, I, with President Clinton, I think they've changed the rules in midstream. I don't care who someone stupped, if you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? The band clearly has stupped his brains out from time to time. In wedlock and without, and then out. I'm more interested in someone running the government who is not a moron. And you can't change, I'm not condoning adultery necessarily, but I mean Eisenhower, I owe him a tremendous debt, he was a great American, beat the fascists. But he was away from home and was stripping his Jeep driver half the war. <laughs> Kay Summersby, well Kay, it looks like the Nazis have given up again. Some fellatio at HQ would be in more than it. <laughs> How about some cunnilingus, it looks like they're surrendering. 
I, he probably used the real words, uh, you know, classy guy. I, I, I'm not condemning him. Mamie was collecting scrap iron back home. But uh, that's between him and Mamie. I mean, the truth is, I think uh, Clinton's wife has made peace with him. Definitely shook the blondo. Bad move. She went to the New York Post and signs pictures of her ass from Playboy. So he made a bad choice there, you know. The fact is, that's between him and his wife, and maybe she made her peace with him. The, the, the dark-haired one, Paula Jones, leave me alone. What are you talking about? She says he took his penis out. I, I, that's a lie. You, a guy like that, you don't take your penis out. In one to ten, that's ten, when everything is settled. I was accused of that. It was horrible. It was small claims court, too, which was particularly <laughs> insulting. I couldn't, I couldn't hold my head up at the friars. It was awful. Clinton, yes, yes, but you know, how about uh, uh, Roosevelt, an icon in my house. We're stooping from a wheelchair, God bless him. <laughs> a veritable Special Olympics of stooping. <laughs> Died in another woman's arms, wasn't his wife. Did that, you know, the Kennedy brothers, my God. <laughs> Got it from the old man. Joe Kennedy used to sneak into my old apartment building on Fifth Avenue long before I was there to stoop uh, Gloria Swanson. I used to see her at the end of her life. She had a guy with white ducks making the meals, like a Howard Hughes thing with gloves, you know. And I'd take my dog down the back and she'd go. Anyway. Uh, um, uh, the Kennedy guys, uh, really, Teddy did some good things, but it's a bit pathetic. Now, he looks his life. The man looks like a jack-o'-lantern, plain and simple. There isn't an intact blood vessel on his face which now occupies, like the Hawaiian Islands, twice as much space as it once did. And let's not be prudes. He had a good time. Fly on the wall, yeah. This busted blood vessel here has a tale. The menage a trois in Paris with the Pan Am stewardess and the Sorbonne professor. This little rearrangement of the arterial tissue here was after the Army-Navy game at Bookbinders in Philadelphia with the Notre Dame professor. This scar is from driving a Jeep upside down with a glass of grain alcohol and Kool-Aid in my hand. <laughs> with two anthropology students hanging from my earlobes. There was a life there, ladies and gentlemen. So when it comes to sexual harassment in any public hearings, Kennedy goes, I give it to my colleague, Senator Biden. You know, I mean, just, <laughs> people don't trust politicians as it is, for Christ's sakes. Marion Barry got elected, didn't he? With a commercial, if you want to stamp out drugs, first you've got to find them. <laughs> Marion Barry knows where the good stuff is. No, I don't. <laughs> and speaking of law and order, who knows more about the penal system than Marion Barry? You know what's the disgrace there? That he's not worthy. Not because of that. I believe in forgiveness. I believe in vindication. He's a crappy mayor. The place is going into the toilet. That's the important thing, right? Judge Thomas got away. See, you see, you think about him. He's been in the Supreme Court now for quite a while. He's undistinguished. He doesn't declare. And here a man who had every opportunity from affirmative action and other things, who now takes opposite tack. No matter what you think, there's a lot that has to be changed. But when they asked him law questions, he would answer with, I was born in Pinpoint, Georgia. <laughs> My grandmother and grandfather sent me to school. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. My grandpappy and my grandmammy sent me to Yale. Then I married a white woman who looks Irish And I'm a federal judge, so kiss my ass Just two. To watch the sun is born. Oh, well, yes, Jerry Lewis sings Handel's Messiah as you've never heard it before. And he shall rest. 
I hear Jerry sings the stirring arias of Handel's Messiah. Plus, if you act now, Cantata 82, Ich habe genug. Ich habe genug. Ich habe aus jenen Plus, Americana, if you act now, Jerry Lewis sings all these great. Camp down, races, goes along, and you die. Every valley. Yes, if you call in now, Jerry Lewis sings all of Handel's Messiah. <laughs> I gotta show you something. You know, my first appearance on network television, strange enough, was when I was 15, and I was far from a professional. I, uh, oh, I was so cute. <laughs> now I gotta have a Jaja Gabor job here. It's gonna be, you know. if you snapped her on the back, She'd unravel like a window shade. The whole thing would, the torque would drive her over like a, like a circus acrobat. It's a woman who smacked the cop, then she was afraid that she needs community service. She's afraid she'll be sexually assaulted. You want to talk about chutzpah? I would say it's safe to say her sexual assault days are over. Take an exceptionally desperate, lonely prison lesbian to make a play for this thing. Hello, Zsa, Zsa Francine, Section 21. It's good to see you. We're having a little Sadie Hawkins night. We got some great alcohol and Tropicana and some trail mix. Why don't you come by? I love your new exercise video. Conrad Hilton was your best husband. Love you. <laughs> best service she could do a community would be to leave it. Sorry, Josh, but slightly decadent. Anyway, has nothing in Dominique, I can guarantee you. <laughs> I got to show you this footage. This is our appearance. My appearance with my group, the Teen Tones, my friends. We're still friends today. You don't want to see them decrepit, the hair. The... <laughs> anyway, uh, but 1957, we were on the Ted Mac Amateur Hour. The Teen Tones, share this with me. It's such a kick. Roll it. All right, fellas, we want to hear you sing. You all set? Right. Yeah. Here they go. The Teen Tones. I want a girl who's just like you. Sure you Look at the zits there, oh, yeah. and the insecurity. Huh? I was probably looking at the camera woman. I was space. This is unbelievable. My baby, though you do 
not dribble on the beer You still my baby Though you don't do your sleeping in the crib You're my baby I hope I'm your brass section and some reeds and background singers and it's a it's too embarrassing to explain so I have to fill in the trumpet roll and everything else it's exhausting but I don't want you to miss it da 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 this song is I'll do the best I can da 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 you know those Tito Puente guys with the cheeks bulging and the veins this song is dedicated to someone who was wonderful to me at a difficult time, and I guess to her this song is dedicated. Da 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 da. When things go awry. All I want to do is cry You know that there's someone who's on my side When I'm feeling blue She knows what to do And she does it all for me And I need her desperately She's my lawyer My lawyer And she eases all my pain She's best you can retain She's my lawyer My attorney, baby And she's the only woman The only woman for me The only woman da, 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 da. The only, the only, the only, the only, the only woman da, 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 da. She's as sweet as she can be she deposes me And says the ex is gonna take my condo She knows what I've been through Ever since I said I do So when I need to confide oh, There's property to divide Call my lawyer My lawyer And she always takes my calls when I'm about to lose my balls She's my lawyer My mouthpiece baby And she's the only woman The only woman for me Oh, oh, oh It's so exhilarating Oh, to watch a litigating Hear a voice on the telephone A sweet talking little flower At three hundred bucks an hour I'll have her someday Cause this time I can say She's the one I want to spend my life with Da 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 And in due course She's gonna want a divorce 
And she'll squander all my wealth And then she'll represent herself I need another lawyer A lawyer Losing wives, I don't mind A good attorney's are hard to find I need another lawyer A barrister, baby I thought no one was nicer Then my little shyster She gave me such a thrill And then she sent the bill And now I want to care We have to get some people because I don't think the medical coverage goes this far. The only woman for me. A wonderful orchestra. Sitting on the ground with my other leg. Oh, like a good leg on me. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, perhaps. There it goes again. Loved your work in Das Boot, by the way. It's one of the best camera work I've ever seen. Submarine camera. What time's the third show? Blah, blah, blah.